Yeah, basically the, the beginning of this whole project was an invite from Ian Jeffrey, who I had met at the Great British Beer Festival about a year ago now. He uh, was setting up an opportunity for brewers to come over to England and work with J.D. Witherspoon, which is a pub chain over there. Uh, a fairly large pub chain. We're talking it's about one of the biggest in the country, 850 pubs. He gave me an invite to come over and brew a beer specifically with one of the traditional English breweries to then be served at this festival to run through this pub chain. Uh, so J.D. Witherspoon doesn't own a brewery. Uh, so these were all not only my beer, but the other brewers that came into the country uh, were all working with partner breweries over there. I met Ian Jeffrey at the station. Yeah, he pretty much just uh, sent us on our way he was with, with, you know, like, uh, you're going to meet someone in Devizes. Uh, the whole, it was like being in a spy movie. You got our cell phones didn't work over there. Like, we know we're supposed to meet this guy in this train station at this pub at this set time and we get there and the pub's closed. We're kind of walking around this train station checking out the pigeon trying to figure out how to use a payphone or get online to check emails. He meets us, buys us a coffee, gives us like train tickets and like an envelope of cash and he's like all right I'm gonna like he was going to like Estonia or like some random place like that. So we get on this train to Swindon and we're like I guess we're meeting someone else there and we had no we didn't really have like a phone number for him. It was it was really kind of fun you know. The Wadworth Brewery is in the town of Devizes, uh, and it, this is an old traditional market town, very quaint, you know, exactly what I'm thinking of as a, a small English village. And uh, Wadworth is a huge brewery in the middle of this, uh, this small town, and, but very traditional. They still uh, deliver cask to their pubs in town with uh, draft horses. Um, so, you know, when we were there brewing, we, we kind of look out the window and you can hear this horse going down the, you know, down the street and it's, yep, they're bringing, they're bringing beer to their local pubs. And there's a row of like 20 cars behind it. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's phenomenal, fascinating for me, you know. One of the things that's interesting about the brewery is they've, they've tried to boost up their marketing and because of where they are in the history of the brewery, their whole thing is welcome to Wawrish here, so they're playing up the traditional angle. So they still do the horse-drawn thing. They have these horses that they take to like farm shows and also deliver the beer. The last Master Cooper working in any British brewery, and he sits there. This, these are the hands of Alistair Sims, yep. and he he takes like raw wood and makes handmade wooden barrels. Uh, they have, they're the only I think the only people that have like their own sign painting shop for all the signs for all their pubs. It's because this is a real ale festival and real ales for beers that uh, are cast conditioned, so they're put into a firkin. You add a little bit more sugar, a little bit more yeast to get the final carbonation in this vessel. Real ale part is it's a living beer at that point. And of course these breweries are used to packaging in these casks and uh, you know, are very comfortable with, with that media, where a lot of breweries around the world are not necessarily. When we make casks here, I mean, if we're doing four firkins, it takes, you know, it's one person, it's very hands-on, including, like, the cleaning and, and getting everything ready, probably three hours to make four of them. And, and at Wadworth, like, the, the cask racking plant they had, I mean, they're cranking out, was it, like, 20 every minute and a half? Incredible. You know, they just have this yeah. infrastructure for it, because that's, like, the great tradition of British brewing is cask conditioned ales. So they've, they've done it for centuries, and a lot of people still do it. And there's this, there's this really strong sense of a certain segment of the British beer drinking public that that's what beer is. We end up in uh, Devizes and uh, the Wadworth Brewery. You didn't have too much of an idea of what we were going to be looking at, but it's this uh, very uh, traditional, you know, old brewery um, that uh, was designed uh, with gravity in mind. So the traditional breweries uh, would have, you would have started the process at the very top of the building and, uh, you know, because this is pre-pumps, you know, there's no, you know, turn on a switch and have electricity. Um, so they would have figured out how to, uh, you know, hoist grain all the way up to the top of the building. And, uh, um, and then they would start their mash up there, and then everything would be gravity fed from the mash tun into the kettle, um, you know, into the uh, fermentation vessels, and then finally into uh, the, the final racking into the, the casks. So this is a 125 year old brewery, and uh, um, it, it looked it too. It was great, you know. Um, uh, things are sort of tucked wherever they 
expanded to, to tuck in a new piece of equipment and uh, you know it may have been 75 years ago but that's sort of where it's the mill was from 1932 there's this great old steam engine which there's a picture of in there and there's just all these little relics of the past that i mean over here would probably be in a museum and yeah including um brew logs from a hundred years ago i think he said that the oldest one he still has records of are from the early 1900s but uh, he, he opened them up and we went through some of these old uh, uh, recipes and, uh, you know, amazing because, you know, we have brood logs from 10 years ago and, and it's like, <laughs> wow, 10 years. And, uh, you know, so here's a guy from 1908, he opened up a recipe. And, and an interesting part is uh, he was showing us that uh, in 1908 they were buying hops from Oregon. Uh, even at that time there was sort of this, uh, you know, import of uh, American uh, hops, which I thought was interesting. But. 100 barrel open copper kettle. Uh, there are only about four, I think, left in, in England at this point. A uh, very traditional vessel that would have originally been coal fired. Uh, it's now steam, um, well, the internal calandria, steam coil inside of it. Uh, but it's this massive copper kettle, and they throw in uh, whole flower hops, uh, which you can see down at the bottom. And then they have uh, wort just coming out out of this spout, um, dropping down in there. They uh, start the steam coils right right at the beginning, uh, so the wort is hitting these uh, hot steam coils the whole time. And uh, oh, the smell was just phenomenal. The aroma was incredible. And I was fascinated. I just sat there watching this thing fill most of the morning, um, and uh, it was just so different because mostly we have, or God, everyone here in the U.S. has closed closed kettles and uh, so for this thing to just be this big cauldron it was just pretty so after uh, after a couple of days of uh, being at Devizes and brewing and, and spending time with the brewers and the people at, at Wadworth um, uh, sort of the next part of our agenda uh, for this this uh, weather sports trip was they're having a press event at and all we know is it's in the Cross Keys in Chelsea uh, which is right near the financial district in London London was great because we were able to meet the other brewers that had been flown over to uh, England for this event. Um, so uh, there was a gentleman from St. Petersburg. Uh, Russia, not Florida. Oh, St. Petersburg, Russia. Um, uh, Norway and South Africa. And Belgium. In Belgium, that's right. Um, and uh, so we all got together and we chatted. It was only a couple hours we were able to uh, sort of uh, we were meeting the media, but then we were able to kind of chat about the different, everyone's experiences there. And uh, so that was really nice. Um, and to just kind of connect with other sort of craft brewers, these are all sort of craft brewers from around the world that have been flown in. And so to, to kind of make a larger connection out there as well, which was really nice. And, uh, you know, a feature of the sort of the whole event that I liked. And it was great going to, the, I guess the Cross Keys is one of like Weatherspoon's sort of like marquee pubs in their chain. It's, it's in a really real prime location in central London. It's in the, the financial district and it's an old bank and it's it's massive. It's this cavernous room with tons of marble everywhere and nice carpets. And we walk in and we've got like our sweaty nose flannel shirts on and we're dragging on this luggage and we walk in, it's like noon. And I swear to God, we walk into a room with a hundred people and all of them are wearing suits and ties like drinking like like necking pints of beer on their lunch hour and we kind of rolled in like kind of haggard from this trip and I, it sort of reminded me of those old cowboy movies where you know someone walks in a bar and the whole room kind of <laughs> what are you doing here but it was great you know and like oh yeah we're in the private room in the back for a little press check so it was it was pretty fun yeah